Hi, Jack Canfield here. Welcome to another segment of Talking About Success. My next guest, Veronica Onusiangwu, is from London, England. She is the author of a book called Woman, You Are Not Infertile. We're going to talk about that. And she's also the founder of the LWH Healing Center in London. And you have a track record of helping people that have been struggling to conceive to actually become pregnant through the Word of God. We're going to talk about that. And she's also coached many couples to beat impossible situations in their life and squash barrenness and sickness. Now, you have amazing results that you're producing in people's lives. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your work. Well, thank you so much for having me, Jack. And uh, I've been writing and helping families all over the world to conceive for many years. I've written so many books on infertility and healing. You know, it's been a wonderful journey just seeing God turn around the life of so many families, give them beautiful children. I see these women come to me, they're weeping, they're crying. It's like there's no way out. And then I'm able to step in there and, you know, wipe away those tears. And in a few weeks, they're pregnant, they have their babies, and they're happy. So thank you so much for having me and giving me the opportunity to share my story. I'm really glad to share your story. Now, you've been sharing your story prolifically for a long time. Author of 12 books on fertility and other books as well. Woman, You Are Not Infertile. God Has Not Forgotten You. Hope for a Woman Struggling to Conceive. Choosing Your Baby Sex. Who Said We're Too Old to Conceive. Oh God, Why All the Miscarriages. Just on and on it goes. Now, The main thing is we talked earlier before we came on air and you've literally had people come to you who've been spending tens of thousands of dollars to get pregnant, not being helped by the medical profession. Yes. And then you do this amazing work and within weeks, often they're pregnant. Yes. So how did you come to do this work? Talk to me a little about that. The Lord actually called me to write. Mm -hmm. And as a young mother, I started writing with my babies on my back and I started writing these healing books and, uh, you know, medical books. I'm really taught by the Lord, taught by the Spirit of God. And he taught me how to write, what to write. And that's why we get the results, because the, 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 the anointing of God is on the work. So I'm able to prescribe the word of God for women who are trying to conceive. I will actually say that I'm a biblical fertility doctor, you know, (laughs) because I can, as I'm speaking to you, God is already telling me this is the scripture that they can use to be here. And then I'm able to write those prayers out and people use it. And to the glory of God in a few weeks, I'm getting those calls. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. And I've helped couples and families from every nation of the world beat infertility through the living word of God. Now, when you, you say you write prayers for people, then do they then pray those prayers that you've written? Yes. And that's what then makes this happen? Yes. And it, is each prayer you write, is it unique to that person? Or yes. is it, you're kind of downloading from God in that moment what the words are? Yes. What happens is if I'm speaking to somebody and they're telling me the problem, sometimes God just drops a word in my spirit. Yes, I hear him say, this scripture will hear this, this scripture will hear this. And then I'm able to write out the prayer for the person and then give them instructions. This is what I want you to do with this prayer. And as they go back and do it, they get results. And sometimes as well, I just pray. And after prayers, within a few weeks, they are calling me back to say, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. So it depends on how God leads us. Sometimes God even says to me, tell that person I've given them a child. As I'm speaking to them, God says they have a child now. And I said, well, go home, run home quickly and get on with this business because God is giving you a child today. And then within weeks, they come back and say, oh, you, you were right. We are pregnant. We are pregnant. So that's how it's been with, with me and these wonderful families all over the world. Now, how long have you been doing this? Um, about 18 years. And how many women do you think have gotten pregnant as a result of this? Well, we have documented with pictures and everything. We have at least 500. But that's the 1%, I believe, because sometimes some people don't come back. You don't know that they got pregnant. Yes, sometimes they don't. And I remember, Jack, there was a time I had all my articles 
on my website. And people will just go, we sat on your website and we got pregnant. Just from your website. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want another child, don't go to her website. <laughs> I said, oh, the articles are doing it as well. <laughs> so it's like everything I have, you know, there's so much anointing, so much grace on it. It just works. Broken bones. I you get your broken bones with broken this? Broken bones. People just get healed. Now, you told me before we came on air that you work with someone and their broken bone was healed like almost instantly. Yeah. Even my leg, my own legs. Your own leg. Yeah. My, my, my ankle was broken. And I was able to use the word of God to get it restored in 24 hours. That's beautiful. Quite amazing. Thank you. You're, uh, you're a miracle worker. Now, I know from the statistics in the United States, I don't know worldwide, that infertility is increasing. It's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a growing problem that we have. So I think what you're doing is so important for so many people. There's so much pain out there mm -hmm. when people can't conceive, when they so much desperately want a child. It must be very fulfilling for you. It's one of those things, Jack. I remember in the early days, I used to cry a lot. Yeah. Because I, when they come and I, I see the pain, it, 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 it overwhelms me. It, there's so much pain out there for a woman who is trying to conceive and this is a it's, it's a field is an area where not a lot of people you know know what to do mm -hmm. and 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 sometimes women come to me they've been everywhere without any results so when they come and God gives me that word. I'm able to say, okay, stop crying. Stop crying. I have the answer. I have the answer. And then I take out my book. Oh, God, Jack, I have so many prescriptions on my computer <laughs> that I've given women over the years and men. On my flight to, to America, there's a lady I worked with five weeks ago, and it was her husband. They said he, he didn't have sperm, that his sperm, you know, zero sperm count. Right. And... I wrote a prayer for her, and she said, after I prayed with her, she knew immediately that that problem was over. And I gave her a prayer. She said, I used your prayers, but I knew it was over. And exactly five weeks, they are pregnant. And she's on the phone. Oh, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. And then the text came in. <laughs> God has done it. It's five weeks. And I, I get that result all the time. I had a painter who came to paint my house, and as soon as he came in, he stood and he started crying. I'm like, why are you crying? Oh, there is something about this house. And then he goes, God said to paint your house, do whatever you want and not charge you. I'm like, mm, God, you are up to something. And then as he continued to paint my house, Something happened. He had been trying to have a child for nine years. And while he was busy, because it was a lot of work, while in my house, he said one morning, he said, I have to go to the hospital. My wife is not feeling well. <laughs> <laughs> and then from the hospital, he called, oh, my wife is pregnant. She's pregnant. Nine years. I'm, I love it. Nine years. You should be able to get a lot of free work. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who has to, needs to be ready to come paint my house. <laughs> have a baby. Jack, I, I used to say if I was a fertility doctor, I probably would have um, a, a medical doctor. Like right. I would have maybe brought a jet plane here because with right. the amount of testimonies I have. Yeah. <laughs> well, these last two stories you told are pretty impressive. Pretty well, impressive. So many like that. I could go on and on and on and on. I have had women that the womb was removed. No, get out of here. Yeah. In America here. Wow. Her womb was removed and she came to me and I put a prayer plan in place for her. And she went back home and she locked herself in her house. And she began to work out the plan. She's the happy mother of a baby girl today, baby Veronica, who she named after me. <laughs> I have them in so many all over the world. Like I love that. it. I love it. I love it. I wish we could. Have, well, we're running out of time. Well, <laughs> so before we do that, uh, tell people if they want to take advantage of this gift you have and, and, and the service you provide, where do they go? How do they find you? You can go to my website, 
helpforinfertility.com or lwhhealingcenter.com. There you will find all the information you need and how to get in touch with me. And remember, I love you and I'm there to help you to embrace your own child as well. Nothing is hard for the Lord. Nothing is impossible. Sometimes we suffer because we don't know or we don't trust God enough. But God wants you healed. God wants you blessed. God wants you to have that child. He's not against you. He's for you. I have proved it again and again and again. God is the good God. And he loves his people and he wants only the best for you. You can get in touch with me, helpforinfertility.com, lwhhealingcenter.com. Or just Google my name, Veronica Anusiongu, infertility, and you will be able to locate me. Beautiful. I hope that the world will be lined up outside your door and um, people will not have to suffer from this deep desire and yearning not to have a child when they want one. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for sharing this this beautiful gift with the world. I'm so grateful to have you as a guest. If every guest was as amazing as you are, I would probably have my own show on NBC or something. <laughs> so I really appreciate you joining me. Thank, thank you, you very so much. Thank you so much, Jack. It's a privilege and honor very to good. be here with you today. I, I believe you. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. I'm very grateful. Well, the spirit just oozes out of you. It comes running like a river. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, stay tuned. We'll be back with another segment in just a moment. Don't go away. God is the faithful God. There is not before Him. There is not beside Him. Faithful is our God. Merciful and kind. Who else would have gone to Calvary for us? Who else would have done it for us if not for Jesus? I don't know where we'd be today. If it had not been for His grace, if it had not been for His mercy, if it had not been for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The title of my message today is Right Now is Our Resurrection. Most of the time, we don't realize that the resurrection power is working each and every single moment in our lives. But today, I want you to know that the resurrection power of God is working in your life every single moment. Sometimes we don't know that we are experiencing resurrection in our day-to-day -day affairs. When you lie down and you wake up, you have experienced resurrection. The resurrection power of God is always at work for us. Please, if you have your Bible, go with me to John 11, 25. In John 11, 25, Jesus said, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? This is Jesus speaking. Jesus is telling us, even before he went to the cross, he was telling us already that he is our resurrection. He is our life. No matter what we think in our lives that is dead, no matter what we think in our lives that is not working, Jesus told me to tell you this morning that He is our resurrection. What does it mean to resurrect? To resurrect means that to renew. To resurrect means to revitalize. There may be areas in our lives that are weak right now. Jesus said, I am resurrecting those parts, for I am your resurrection. To resurrect means to rejuvenate. God is rejuvenating every area of our lives, every second. Right now is our resurrection. Most of the time, these experiences that we go through are not meant to keep us down. Yes, we all go through challenges. 
We all go through tough times, but Jesus Christ sent me to come and tell you that He is your resurrection and your life. The Lord Jesus Christ is now revealed in our lives. We are to set our hearts on the glory of God. We are to set our hearts on the goodness of God. We are to set our hearts for the time when the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed. And when is the Lord Jesus Christ revealed? The Lord Jesus Christ is revealed right now. He is our resurrection. He is the life. He is our goodness. He is our mercy. He is our life. He is our health. He is our strength. He is. He is. The Lord Jesus is. Sometimes situations come our way that look dead, that looks as if there is no hope again. But I want you to know that we have been born into a living hope. We are to set our minds, as the scripture says, it says we are to set our mind for the time when the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed. And right now the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed in our lives. We are not dead. We are not children that are serving a dead God. So to worship trials, circumstances come our way. But there is someone who has paid a price. A great price has been paid. Right now is our resurrection. Right now are we experiencing the resurrection of God. Even in the areas that have looked as if God is not there. In those areas of our lives where there seems as if nothing is happening. I want to tell you there is God is a faithful God. He is merciful and He is kind. God is aware of your situation and God is keeping an eye on you. No matter what you have lost, I want you to know that there is restoration for you in God. Joel 2.25, God says, I will restore to you, I will give you back the years that the canker worm stole. You have restoration in Christ Jesus, the things you taught you have lost forever can be restored to you. Before we start, I want us to say a quick word of prayer in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, we worship you. We exalt you, mighty Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I bring this program before you, Holy Spirit. I want you to take control, Spirit of God, and use me as a vessel to speak to your people to bless your people, to guide your people, to lead your people into all truth, Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus. God sent me to come and tell you that there is nothing that is lost. For he promises us restoration. God says, I will restore to you. I will give you back. Even the years. You know, sometimes we meet people who say, oh, it's too late for me. I have lost so many years. God said, even the years that you thought you have lost, that he can give you back those years. God says, I will restore to you. I will give you back the years that you thought that the canker worm has stolen from you. So there is restoration in our God. Recently, I saw a woman of 74 who gave birth at 74. I know many women would have given up and said, it's too late for me. But this woman refused to give up and at the age of 74 she had a baby baby boy for the women out there who are crying oh i have lost so many children to miscarriage no matter what it is you have lost whether it's a business a ministry or a husband a wife a spouse no matter what you have lost god says i will give you back the Bible says Job lost everything. He lost his children. Everything he had, he lost. But the Bible says God restored to him. God gave him back. Yes, I know. The children he had later, they do not replace the ones that he lost. But God Almighty is faithful. There is a saying that I always say when things come my way that want to challenge me. I wrestle with the unchangeable truth that God's abundance is mine now. I wrestle with the unchangeable truth that God's abundance is mine right now. Sometimes you have to wrestle. Sometimes you have to fight your way through. I am my seeker. 
You have to fight your way through. Sometimes it's a battle. You have to stand your ground and you have to declare the goodness of God is mine now. I will not settle for less. Most of the time we have all settled for less than the best that God has for you. It's time for us to rise up and say, I wrestle with the un unutterable truth that God's supply is mine now. God's abundance is mine now. God's wisdom is mine now. God's health is mine now. No one can stop it. No one can take it from me. Sometimes that's what you need to do. The Bible says we are to fight a good fight of faith. How do you fight a good fight of faith? You fight a good fight of faith by saying, God Almighty is not going to fail me. God Almighty is not going to let me down. God Almighty has promised and he does not lie. You need to remember again and again this way of claiming God's goodness. You have to claim it. Sometimes some people will tell you, oh, God will take care of it. No, it doesn't work that way. It's not automatic. You need to study to show yourself approved. God say you need to study to show yourself approved. You must know. If you don't know, you can't have what you don't know. You need to claim the promises for yourself. You need to know how to claim the promises of God for yourself. It's not automatic. I remember when we were young, and whenever they have baby in the house, uh, 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 they will open Psalm 23 and put it under the pillow. If you open Psalm 23 and put it under the pillow without knowing what is in Psalm 23 and claiming it is not going to do you and your new baby any good. It's the promises that you speak out. It's the promises that you claim for yourself that become real in your life. What is it you are facing? God said, claim the promise. If you have my word, claim that promise. I want you to know that God's abundance is yours right now. When you claim it, don't worry. You know some of us, we want to help God. We want to say, hey, how will this happen now? Look how long I've been suffering. Look how bad my case is. You are the one using your mouth to say your case is bad. God never told you that. God Almighty says that the earth is full of his goodness. Who told you that your case is bad? God sent me to come and tell you that the earth is full of his goodness. That his abundance is yours for the claiming now. When you do this, you will find that your supply will come in ways you never imagined. God will send you help in ways you never imagined. I remember years ago, I used to just not have enough. And I would pray, 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 pray asking God for um, provision. Then one day God opened my eyes to Psalm 23 that if I make him my shepherd, that I will not want. Immediately, I lifted my hand and I said, Father, from today, I make you my shepherd. And from that day to this day, I have never known anything called lack. The day I made him my shepherd, for real. Because some of you sometimes, oh, I believe God. But have you? I want to talk to you about light, the light of God. Earlier in my work with the Lord, the Lord began to teach me about light. But I didn't really take that uh, teaching very seriously. God was teaching me about the importance of knowing about his light. Recently, I wrote and published this book. It's from the things God was teaching me years ago about light. How to walk in God's light for your breakthrough. How to walk in God's light for your breakthrough. If you are listening to me, if you ever get to hear this message, I beg you in the name of Jesus to invest in this book. How to walk in God's life for your breakthrough. 
this will really really help you it will take away so many things that have been confusing you and it will help you to find your journey easier and quicker if i had listened then when god was teaching me about praying the light my life would have been totally different from what it is now how to walk in god's light for your breakthrough the secret of life is in the light the secret of life is in the light before god could create anything he called for light he said let there be light and there was light that was the first thing that god created why because within the light is knowledge within the light is everything you need light 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 the light of god contains everything you need to succeed we need to know about god's light the light that shined brighter and brighter the light that no man can quench for those of you who think oh my situation is hopeless i have suffered i have done everything i know to do you know why you are still suffering is because you don't have light we need the light of god to bring us to the place where we are supposed to be there's a light that shines brighter and brighter and brighter this light is meant to bring you to the place where you are supposed to be it is the healing light of god first john 1 5 to 9 the bible says that god is light god almighty is light then this is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him is no darkness at all god is light in god there is no darkness at all if you want to succeed you need light you need to walk in his light if you want a breakthrough you need light why do you think before god could create anything the first thing he created was light god said let there be light why did he create light first because without light you cannot make progress so when you begin to call for light 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 that light will begin to shine and it will show you which way to go it will guide you it will bring you to the place where you are supposed to be jesus told us he says in john 1 5 i am the light of the world i am the light of the world the light that shineth and shineth brighter the light of the world is jesus the bible said in him is light there is no darkness in our god there is a light that is waiting to be activated there is a light that is waiting to be prayed upon there is a light that shines brighter and brighter which no man can stop in our god is a good god our god is merciful once more i encourage you i want you to get this book get it as many copies as you can bless people with it there are people that you know that are struggling in areas of their lives they don't even know what to do i want you to bless them with this book get one for yourself get one for the people that you know that will be blessed and make sure that you spread the light for the light of the glorious gospel of jesus christ we solve the problems but people need to know how to activate this light and they need to know how to pray the light god bless you in the name of jesus to give you a, a brief overview of, of my situation so um it would be 2012 and um we were trying for a baby and nothing happened and nothing happened and nothing happened and it became incredibly debilitating i mean all of us know that there's nothing that speaks louder than a barren womb it is there all the while it talks all the while now that's that's an interesting one because it's talking at you and you're going to need to learn to talk back to it and put it back in its box um so i really was struggling with it you know we, we'd been to various different people um age wasn't on my side you know i was told that my eggs were too old uh, my husband had got 
quite a dire problem, actually. We'd been to the very famous, world famous IVF clinic for uh, sperm analysis in Vaughan in Cambridge. And the, 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 the outcome of that was utterly dire, awful, absolutely awful, um, that it was going to be impossible for us to conceive. Um, we didn't just have one report on that. We had about three reports on that. It wasn't just impossible for us to conceive, but they were, and, and, and IVF was, that was going to be the only way possible. Um, but it was also going to be IVF with ICSI, which is when they take one sperm, if they can find it, and they inject it into the egg. Um, and we just haven't got the money. We, you know, the, 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 there was just no options. The, the, there wasn't £12,000 in the bank for one attempt. And I just, I fell to pieces. I completely fell to pieces. My husband fell to pieces. Um, and, you know, we sought various different people's help and advice. And we went to another clinic in Cambridge. And again, the same report. And remember, this took place over a number of years. So it wasn't just like a flash in the pan thing. This was a sustained problem, okay? Um, and then one particular day, we'd been recommended to speak to um, a, a very well-to-do, very established doctor down in London. And, um, well, the report was so negative. The report was so awful. And this is, the, this is the absolute truth, that on the way home, my husband and myself, we were so now devastated, crushed, crushed would be the word, that we, we got completely on the wrong train and we didn't speak to each other for three days. We couldn't find the words, the utter, we, the pain was so immense. And I, you know, every one of these you know, of, of us on here who are faith ambassadors and who are wanting to help you women, we know that pain. We know that pain. Anyway, I, I'm a school teacher and I, I managed to rally myself up and I managed to get in the car for work the next day. And, you know, I, I was driving down to, it's quite a commute. So I was driving down to, 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 to my school and I, I cried out. I said, you know, God, you have sent angels. You have sent angels to people in need. Mum and knees. I need help. I need an angel. You need to help me. And I, I didn't think much of that cry for help. And I got into my school and I, I put my computer up and I put my, my computer up on the desk. And this overwhelming feeling inside me spoke to me. And I've learned to listen to that. You listen to that feeling. And it said to me, type in the lord's the lord's word on healing typed it in and up came pastor not bishop i looked at it and i was like mm, yeah and I, I thought oh no it it, it 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 can't be for me and i know a bishop knows me i, I had this conversation with her later and I read through it and I read through some of the testimonies and I was like, well, it's all there. What, you know, it, it's all there. Well, like, I've got to get on with my day and I've got, I've got to teach and I've got a full teaching timetable that day. Anyway, I found the number and I texted Pastor Ver Veronica and later in the day, she got in touch with me and it was, it was literally text exchange. Okay. Cause I, I was at work and it was difficult and put in the post CDs, um, um, DVDs of faith clinic books, and it was my starting point. Faith Clinic was the angel. Pastor Veronica, her books, and it's it's quite you know it, it it's it's quite well used. There's an awful lot of markings on these pages, and um, that was the starting point. And that would be in November 2014. Eventually, April 2015, I started to go to a faith clinic. I went, I went to the first faith clinic. Now, what was incredible in between then and now, oh, go to daddy, darling. Um, what was incredible between now and then, well, uh, between the November and the April, was I'd got a very good friend at work who was the head of RE, who'd been looking for the fruit of the womb for 15, that's one five, 15 years. And I was like with her each morning, with my book going come on let's have a read and we'd read it together <laughs> just got pregnant my friend got pregnant now at this point the incredible thing is jess was not a christian <laughs> okay now we then decided us girls we'd got to get 
all the way down to Faith Clinic. And, you know, Jess was quite, quite pr well pregnant at, at that point. And she met, she met Pasta and it was probably obvious to everybody in Faith Clinic that she hadn't given herself to the Lord, but she got prayed upon and we prayed upon her. And this was an utter miracle. You know, that this was beyond, or, you know, 15 years she'd been seeking the fruit of the womb. I get one book and I sit, okay, darling, take you, darling. Go into the room a moment, darling. I'm talking. And and I the prayers had been working and our understanding had been working. And but basically we went to Faith Clinic together and she she got the miracle, but I hadn't. And I felt awkward. I felt I felt a little bit defeated, but at the same time. The stuff that was going on at Faith Clinic, it was turning everything on its head that I had ever believed. And I can remember Pasta taking me to one side one day and she said, you know, God's not like your earthly God. I was like, right, what do you mean? You see, my earthly God and my earthly dad is quite, quite a strict father. He is a, he is a loving dad, but it always feels in a way that it's quite hard work to approach my earthly father. And Pastor V worked with me and she broke that. And she said to me, God's different. You need to discover who God is. You need to discover the character and nature of, uh, of God. He is only ever good. And I got to the point of realizing that God was running to me quicker with the babies than I was running to him with the babies. He wanted me to have the babies more than I could even, and I wanted the babies. I was crying on my knees. I was on the floor. I wanted these babies so massively, but he wanted me to have the babies. And once I realized that I'm his little girl, that I'm his everything, I'm gonna get upset, but he loves me with such a pure love, with it's not conditional, that I don't have to beg I don't have to beg him for a baby because as um, Pastor Zakia said at the start, it, it, it actually was a commandment that it was given in Genesis that we should go forth and multiply. So why am I begging for something that he, he is actually absolutely telling me, go forth and take? No, the story, <laughs> doesn't end, the story doesn't end there, okay? So I go to Faith Clinic in May 2015. I go in July 2015. By October 2015, there's a shift in me. I'm not anxious. I'm not frightened about not having a baby because I'm not frightened because I've got the baby. The baby, that the, the infertility is not speaking to me. I've spoken back to the infertility. I've put the infertility back in the grave. I've realized I'm a new covenant believer. And I've realized that by his stripes, I am, I was, I, I, I'm healed. I'm completely healed. Infertility was in the grave when Jesus hung on the cross. Amen. So I'm now fruitful. I'm completely fruitful. I'm healed. I'm restored. It doesn't matter that the issue is predominantly my husband because I'm sitting in the throne room with the father. I'm sitting next to Jesus. The babies are there. I don't have to do anything. I just have to sit. <laughs> I don't have to do anything. November that year, 2015, I was pregnant. Um, literally, I, I left the faith clinic on the October one, knowing, just knowing it was completely done. Just knowing. It, it, it was done. Then I came home that evening to my husband and he said, oh, you know, how was it? And I just went, done. It's done. Now, obviously, we had we had marital relationships, obviously, and you know, but the but there was no pressure on that because it wasn't. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to produce this work. You know, it's it's like the the the, the five loaves and the, the two fish. I can never get which way round it is. The food was provided. God did the miracle. God did the miracle. So. You don't have to do anything. I mean, he's done everything for us. So the following August, I had the most beautiful little boy, Peter. Okay. And he is just, that was a little lad coming in just a moment ago with the walkie talkies saying he's found them, which is fantastic. We'll be on those later. Um, but it didn't stop there. 
and I got pregnant very quickly again I think maybe eight months nine months after that and I had the most beautiful little girl Florence Veronica who was born at the Christmas uh, and again I, there's a lot to talk through about that what the hospital said and what yeah what God did with just with just I mean you can see it in my face I'm so I, it was wonderful absolutely wonderful and then it it didn't stop there. I had, so she was born Christmas 2017. And then praise God, my little boy, Alexander was born Christmas 2019. And again, the hospital was, he's got downs. He's got this, he's got um, an incomplete stomach. His stomach never fills with fluid on the scan. <laughs> Uh, we've got to get the um, the surgical team in immediately from Addenbrooke's, which is the massive Cambridge University Hospital near where I live. We're, they're going to have to. He's going to be taken off. He's going to. He's going to have to go here, there, and everywhere. Um, and and cutting a long story short, well, they were all lies. They were all complete lies. Now, for those of you who who want to know the scriptures that spoke to me, um, and I think that's really important to share with you. Worship the Lord. And, we, and his blessing shall be on your food and water. And he shall take sickness away from you. None shall miscarry or be barren. None. Now, can I just point out, it doesn't say, um, it, it, that's not exclusive to being under a certain age. It doesn't work if you're under a certain age. It's exclusive for everybody. So it doesn't say, uh, but you know, this isn't going to work if you hit the menopause, uh, but this isn't going to work if you've got the age for over age 45. Okay. It doesn't say that. It just says none, none shall miscarry or be barren. And what I've got better at doing, and I'm not completely there yet. Okay. Because there's lots of things in our lives that come, at, come to us, but we are guilty of putting the butts there. We put the butts into those sentences and the butts aren't there. There's no mention of menopause. There's no mention of anything like that. There's no mention of age. We have that provision, that, that, that promise. Mm -hmm. And another thing that really spoke to me is, you know, God will give me back everything the canker worm has stolen. So I can have my, my fertility back from my 20s. I can have all those missed opportunities back. I can be the youthful maiden when I was 18 because that's what I've got living on, on the inside of me. I've got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of me. And this one, I just love. This just nails it. Listen to this. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you you now again when i was a baby baby christian i was like mm, uh, mm, uh, does he live in me because he mm. does i'm saved so when he hung on the tree mm. i became a christian i got my salvation but my i had to get my mind to the point of going but you're also healed you've mm. also got the provision you've also got the babies and at that point once i've got my mind to that point and I wouldn't say, and I just want to point out, I didn't have to do works. It's not about works, but it's about spirit led activity. Being guided by what the Holy Spirit tells you. Now he speaks all the while. He speaks all the while. You know, I, I can have conversations with him constantly. And he points things out to me. He'll tell me to go and find a page. He'll tell me to go and find a scripture. He'll tell me to watch... Um, you know, a certain DVD, he'll tell me to get my Bible out. He'll tell me, you know, and, and all these things about, you know, um, eating certain things or doing certain things, you know, he will guide you if he thinks that's the, the way that you need to be. He will talk to you. You know, I, you know, there was a point where I was going for reflexology, acupuncture, taking goodness knows how many vitamins. And I've got my husband doing the same thing because work, 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 work. No, Holy Spirit didn't tell me to do those things. The Holy Spirit answered the day. I drove, I drove to work and I said, help me. Can I come in there? Yeah. Um, you know, um, I just wanted to um, ask a few questions. I know you are um, someone that um, 
does a lot of the fake clinic messages. I want you to touch a bit on that because our time is going. Yeah. Just to quick bits and pieces here, um, uh, uh, just to whet the appetite, you know, we, we have another fake clinic coming soon. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, those so things that you have me, used. I, I mean, like I said, I, I started to go to the faith clinic message, uh, uh, faith clinic like meetings, April, 2015. I went April 2015, May 2015, July 2015, October 2015, I was pregnant, okay? And the, the presence of being with other women who are on the same page, you know, and men as well as me, and the sense of community and understanding and the ability to ask questions of each other and of a, a, a bishop and the laying of, uh, on of hands. I mean, the anointing, massive. The, the presence of God is absolutely massive. And I mean, for me as well, after I'd left Faith Clinic each, each Saturday evening, you know, I'd have the, the message or a DVD, I'd put it in my car. I listen to them every day. I drive to work, and Pastor Veronica knows this, I drive to work every day and they are on in the she car. It in the classroom. <laughs> I do. I have to turn it off when the children come in because obviously, you know, I'm not really supposed to be listening. You play it for the children. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, the children at school know I'm, I'm a Christian, but it's, a, it, you know, I'm not supposed to publicly profess that which is a difficult sign of the times we live in really but yet yeah, i listen to the faith clinic messages every day you All remember when you told me you you will tell the children let's hear pastor veronica for two minutes and we put <laughs> and she will put the, the faith clinic message in the class <laughs> yeah i mean I, yeah i mean the faith clinic messages were the things that moved me and I you know and this is the way of life to live under the new covenant does need a renewal of thoughts mm -hmm. and you know to meet at faith clinic gives me that renewal of thought every month and then I take you know take away with me and I live from that you know I've got a church in the village, okay, and I, I you know Bishop and myself have had conversations about, about this, but the church in the village does not preach what Bishop preaches. And it has ne it never moved me to the point of me being able to have the babies, okay? Whereas attending Faith Clinic, without that, I wouldn't have those three little people. I, ju I, just, I just wouldn't. I would, you know, maybe I would have got there over a, over a longer period of time um, because the Holy Spirit, I was receptive to him. But the anointing that Bishop has, the skill she has, and it's little things like, you know, I, I can remember her saying to me, and I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, I can remember me being anxious and wanting, after, after I'd had the first baby, wanting another one. And I can remember Pastor, she actually named the month that I would conceive. She was right. Because I'd been, oh, I want to, you know, I want to get pregnant straight after Christmas. I want the, oh, I want to conceive in January. And she said, and I, she said to me, she said, I think it would be more like the March. And I took that and I was like, okay. And then it was the March. And then that's when my, my daughter was born at the Christmas. This woman knows what she's on about. <laughs> she knows what, oh, and another thing, I took my mum to Faith Clinic, made my mum who lives in Birmingham, mum had to come down. I made my husband come to faith clinic oh you know i made jess miller my friend okay that girl who got pregnant before me she she <laughs> came to faith when clinic. she got pregnant and you were like whoa, 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 whoa what's going on and I, I remember i said to you once the perfume is smelling around you it's gonna hit you i love that you know once the perfume is when someone spreads the perfume in the room where you are you're gonna smell it also yes yeah. yeah. sometimes and and what I'd like to add now with my friend Jess, I actually became her, the, the godmother of the, the, the child she, she had. Mm. And the incredible thing is mm. she now attends church. Mm. She now, her daughter 
is in the Sunday school of, of the church. And this is a lady who, although she was teaching RE, what let's just say she had got a lot of pagan beliefs okay and i've seen a lady against all odds so we're not just talking about myself here after 15 years conceive and the child she has now got is in the church and um, my friend is in the church wow <laughs> praise jesus well, and you know oh, if i hand to talk is... her your time is your time is going 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 is gone oh what shush what you to do is uh, what are the materials you can recommend for the women that has helped you from the ministry? Well, I know the, the first time you came in contact with the ministry, all I saw was this order of all the books. <laughs> I think as well. I think this must be. And the, the, um, because it, so I can listen and see them on the same screen. Don't worry about it. You go in the other room. Your quiver is full of them. Like my house is full of children. You know, and you know, I can remember the, the doctor in London that we'd been to see. He said to me, um, "If you if you if you do the exe, if you do this and that and the other, send me a photograph of the children, so I could put them on his wall." <laughs> no, thank you. I'm gonna start putting all. I sent, I on sent the photos to, to Pastor B. She's got them on her wall. Because that's where that's where my miracle was. <laughs> and in terms of my resources, okay, I've got so many books from Pastor V. I've got God's Plan for Pregnancy. I've got Who Said You Were Too Old to Conceive. This is brilliant because it's also got, and I love this section. I love it. I mean, you can see it's all completely written on. Um, <laughs> it, I've got additional notes on, you know, and, and I use it. I completely use it, but there's some wonderful stuff in here. And it's about talking specifically to your reproductive organs. Now, I'm a novice. I don't know what to tell my fallopian tubes to do, okay? Um, but I know Pastor V does. And you've also got to believe that you've got that authority. Christ gave you that authority. He said, it's better I go. It's better I go. And then you see in here, you've got all of those Oh, you probably can't see it, but it's all the bits. Let, let, let them just get the books, those that need it, because we don't we don't have the time for you to go through all those uh, team, Bible teacher. I, I'll be quiet, and I'm, I'm going to come and see everybody on the eighth. And I can't, I, honestly, I can't those wait. Can come, just invite them and tell them to get the um, USB for the faith clinic message. Yes. Because I know that's when sometimes she will just text me. She will say, I'm listening to this one or yeah. I'm listening. <laughs> I will. I'll just say, I'll just say I'm on May 2015. Awesome. Awesome. And I'll say, I'm, so, you know, there'll be something. And, and, and I do randomly text her, to, uh, text Bishop to say, wow. And it doesn't matter if I listen to it 50. I must have listened to them hundreds and hundreds of times, hundreds, endless times. I get something new every time. The faith clinic messages are powerful. Yes. I listen to them myself all the time. And my daughter goes, Mom, why are you listening to yourself? I'm like, no, I'm not listening to myself. That's the servant of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's the really important thing that, you yeah. know, regardless of where we all on our journeys, every single day, the Holy Spirit wrote those faith clinic messages through Pasta so well that regardless of where we are at any point in the day, we get and I get answers. Yeah, I get answers, and I'm like, wow, how how did that actually? And you know, Pastor V, you are you are an anointed woman, and I mean, I've got three little children, a very happy husband to thank you. Uh, you know, and um, and I, this morning I went into a shoe shop and I brought three sets of small shoes. Now, if I defeat, if I rewind five years ago. That I was told that was impossible, you know. Like, Thank yeah. you, Lord. And yeah. I've just been and bought shoes this morning. And then next time you buy and buy my own too, please. <laughs> I'm not going to carry those children barefooted. Please, please. Anyway, you are good because she doesn't forget my coffee money. Uh -uh, she doesn't. She must always send that coffee money and every month and say, Pastor, make sure you go treat yourself. Yeah. Do this, do that, do that. She doesn't forget this, that. This is a good ministry, okay? Yeah. This is a good ministry. And I sew into this ministry. I'm a partner in this ministry. I sew into it. And I will I will always 
so into it. And regardless of whatever the needs are, what Bishop's needs are, uh, this ministry, we need to deliver this around the world because mm -hmm. the three children in the garden right now are kingdom children. <laughs> they are kingdom children. And Christ wants kingdom children. The father wants kingdom children. This is, this is a generational thing. This is massive. Thank you, Lord. Massive. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Thank you so much for, for sharing your testimony. A little bit of it, they will, it will unfold more and people will get to hear more and more. There's lots to tell you. There's, yeah, there's so many twists and turns. And I'm going to be there on the 8th of May. And I, 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 I'm so excited. I, I'm so excited because you will receive. Amen. Yeah, with you, with with you, dear, there's nobody that has any excuse anyway. Yeah. I think I'm I'm gonna hand the koboko to you now. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody needs a spanking now, me, you, you and uh, if he is there to uh, uh, Mama Kelly is there, Helen. Uh, I'm handing the koboko over to you guys so that you can know how to flog whoever you need to flog. If you need to use the Bible to flog them, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> You can use your Bible to turn into Koboko. Say you, 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 